So now let's recall. Um, there are three ways of transferring thermal energy, conduction, convection, and radiation. I've just told you about conduction, therefore let's move on to convection. Convection is a process by which thermal energy is transmitted from one place to another by the movement of heated particles of a liquid or gas. Particles must be able to move. Thus, convection can only take place in liquids and gases. Over here is an example of convection. If you put a crystal of potassium permanganate inside a beaker, the crystal will start to slowly melt. And if you put a Bunsen burner below to heat, heat up the water around the potassium permanganate, you will see a stream of purple flowing upwards and then spreading out among the top. This represents convection, whereby the water actually moves and transmits the heated water over to another place. Convection in fluids is mainly due to changes in density. We have learned before in our lower secondary that hot fluids rise and cold fluids sink. As a fluid is heated, it would expand where the volume would increase. However, the mass remains the same. Therefore, if you recall your density from chapter 4, density is equal to mass over volume. Therefore, if volume increases but mass remains the same, your density would decrease. When density is lower, fluid will rise. On the top of the hot fluid originally, there was a colder and denser fluid. This cold and denser fluid would sink to replace the hot fluid and when it's at the bottom, the Bunsen burner is at the bottom as well and therefore it gets heated up. So you can see a sort of a chain reaction. The fluid at the bottom becomes hot, flows upwards and gets replaced with cold fluid sinking down. This cold fluid once again gets heated up, flows upwards, gets replaced with cold fluid sinking down. So it forms a sort of cycle which we call a convection current. In summary, hot fluids rise and cold fluids sink. Let's try a question. Can convection or conduction happen in a vacuum? The answer is no. Both of them need molecules to transfer heat. In a vacuum, there are no molecules. Conduction requires the vibration of molecules and convection requires the flowing of molecules. So one good example is that of air conditioners. Now, air conditioners are best positioned high, near the ceiling of a room. You will mainly see air conditioners at the top parts of your room. Why is that so? The air conditioners produce cold air. This cold air is denser than the air that's around the room. So, based on convection theory, the cold air would sink. When it sinks, it can actually spread out along the floor like this. And this pushes the warm air upwards. The warm air, which is less dense, would rise. And therefore, would go and be in contact with the air conditioner. Then this warm air would become cold again. And this cycle would keep repeating until the room air is all cold. So it's great, yeah? Air conditioners are pretty cool. So in summary, thermal energy can be transferred by conduction and convection so far. And conduction and convection both require a material medium to take place. Convection only takes place in liquids and gases because it is due to density changes and it requires the molecules to be able to move.